Um, so, Carl, hi. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, so it would be honest, brilliant for you to tell us what you do, um, your role at the present and, and what it is exactly. I just realised like the art behind me that's creepy, that I, you become more aware of your uh, background when you meet new people. So I'm sorry, that, that it's like a creepy horror picture. I try and sort of block her out. Um, hello everyone, uh, my name's Carl Warner. I'm the controller of E4. Um, for those of you that don't know what E4 is, shame on you. Uh, E4 is Channel 4's um, young skewing channel aimed at 16 to 34 year olds. Um, and I've been there for now just over a year and a half. Um, before that, I used to run my own production company called Electric Ray, which was a production company set up with Sony Pictures Entertainment. Um, uh, how far do I go back here now? So I keep going back? Well, you could just give us what you do now and then, what I do and now. then we'll that ask what you I do about now. your potty and career history. Got it. Um, uh, don't ramble too much, Carl, uh, is the note. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so, so uh, as a controller of E4, I set the vision and strategy for the channel, decide what types of shows uh, we'd like to commission, the types of talent we want to work for, um, and the best way to market our shows, uh, and basically reach as many young audiences as possible. Um, and the brand is really important to me, uh, and, and the Channel 4 portfolio. Um, it's still a really potent brand and uh, really successful. It, it makes a lot of money. Cool. Um, and so how does your role fit in the bigger picture of um, Channel 4, the TV industry in general? What, what do you mean by that? How does it fit in? For... Well, how, I how... mean, you know, so you're, so what you, you're controller there. So where do you sit in relation to, say, Channel 4 as the big organisation? As in, how important am I? Yeah, how important <laughs> am I? Yeah. Not very important. No. Um, well, I suppose, I, I, I suppose Channel Controller is like probably one of the, the bigger jobs that you can get. Um, so in that sense, it's an important job. Um, there are only a handful of them. So, you know, there's a Channel 4 controller, and there's the E4 controller, and that's it, basically, um, at Channel 4. And at the BBC, there's a controller BBC 1, BBC 2. So, so there, there aren't many ch channel controllers out there. So, so it's important in that sense. Um, and, um, you know, we, we work with, or I work with a scheduler who schedules the programmes as well. Uh, as well as marketing team, which I mentioned, research team, but they all report into me. So um, it's like, this sounds like a way of saying, it's almost like being a prime minister. You're, you're running a sort of cabinet. You're the prime minister. You're saying, make it like this. And then you have, a, you know, team members that, that help kind of act on your vision and strategy. Cool. I, I, basically, I, I basically said, I, I'm not like Johnson to, how, how Joyce Johnson describes himself, do you reckon? <laughs> Say what? I said, do you think that's how Boris Johnson describes himself? <laughs> he, he, he compares himself to me quite a lot, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, right, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. You look similar, but yeah. <laughs> um, so tell us, give us a potted, potted history of your career. That would be really interesting. So I, um, I'm from Hackney in London, East London. Um, I grew up here all my life. Um, and I went to sort of normal state school. Um, did some A-levels, then uh, did a degree in politics at university. I was the first person in my family to go to university from a working class background. Um, and uh, for those that don't know much about Hackney, Hackney's pretty sort of disadvantaged kind of areas, very impoverished. Um, it's sort of, it, it's not so bad now, it's got a bit more hipstery, but, but when I was growing up, it was a tough place to grow up. Um, and uh, so I went to university, I went to the University of Naomi actually, um, and uh, I studied politics there. Um, and I don't know how I did probably, I, sort of, yeah, I did it at A level and I was sort of interested in ideology and um, developing ideas and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, and then whilst I was at university, I managed to get some work experience um, uh, through a contact at my mum's work. My mum was a teacher, um, she worked with electro electrical uh, engineering. Um, and um, I sort of remember sort of being offered this chance to do a bit of work, a bit of sort of runner's work. Um, a runner in television is basically the kind of, you know, dog's body, they do anything, you know, make tea, put the rubbish out, you just you sort of run around, that's why, why they're called runners. Um, and um, I remember being offered that opportunity, I thought, oh, I'll just go here, I don't know what else I'm going to do, my summer holidays. And um, so, I, so I went there and I think I did a week's work experience. So I, I sort of just went at it, you know, as much enthusiasm as possible and and 
it was unpaid um, and then I went back to university and I managed to stay in touch with the um, woman that I met there who funny enough so bizarre she now lives opposite me in, in, uh, in the back garden so weird um, so she, she gave me my first runner's job and um, and then from there I stayed in touch and, and just before I left university um, my mum was sort of determined to get me to go and do um, funny enough uh, uh, work for the civil service or go into proper sort of politics and um but i just didn't fancy that and uh, I, I dropped the contact at a, a line and, and luckily she said oh well, i've got this job out um in cabos for 12 weeks um and it's for a company called endemol i don't know if it, I, I knew it, i had no idea what endemol were and um for some of you may know but endemol made big brother and did or no deal or all, all the big um shows you know total wipeout you know massive shows they make um anyway i, I was previous to it so i think cavill sounds like a laugh you know perfect um and um my mum was so disappointed in me she's so upset um because she, she was you know deterred you know she worked really hard to get me to university and then she's like now you're going to cavill for 12 weeks work as a runner which sounds terrible um you know putting out rubbish and making teas and stuff um Anyway, and I went there and I, I had the best time of my, my life, you know, as you can imagine, you're sort of 21, 22. Um, I'd, I'd walk around the beaches with my top off, I had a Channel 4 pass. It was, a, it was a, bizarrely, it was a show for Channel 4 and E4. Um, and uh, and it, was, it was fantastic. And, and I, I've often said it was like the best job I've ever had. And I sort of peaked too soon in my career because everything beyond that was just a bit sort of rubbish. and <laughs> so not good. But like for 12 weeks, I was... I was yeah on a beach. Um, the show was about two two teams um, uh, made up of boys and girls running a bar each, and um, it was who could make the most money running these bars and they were competing. Um, and it was kind of before Apprentice and no show, so it was a little bit ahead of time. But it was it was a disaster. It never did. It wasn't a, a big hit or anything. And then from there, I stayed within Endemol, and I went on to work on shows like Big Brother. Um, I, I did the tasks for years on Big Brother and worked with Davina on the live shows. Um, and then uh, and then I went to BBC. Oh, and for the, if you don't know, sort of television is mostly made up of freelancers. Um, so so that was quite sort of alarming for me when I first uh, got into it because I was hoping I'd get a secure fixed contract for, you know, a year, two years from a bit. They were like two, three month contracts. Um, and I, I'd come back to London um, but my mum, my mum had moved to um, Edinburgh, which was a bit annoying. Uh, so I didn't have a kind of base. Um, and living in London, as most of you know, is expensive, right? Um, and I, I, I was sort of lucky enough just to sort of stay within that Endemol group and um, carry on working as runner research and stuff. And I was sort of jumping around. But but um, yeah, went on to Big Brothers, the BBC. I helped develop shows like Strictly Come Dancing. Um, and there are different, we can get into it a bit if you like, Mary, but there are different sort of roles in television. One is a production. Go for it. Get into it. Yeah, well, one, you can go down a sort of production route, which is the making of television. So, you know, researchers, assistant producers, directors, writers. Um, and then there's another route, which is more development based. You call it development, which is a, a creative role where you come up with new ideas for television. And I was really interested in that bit of it because. I'd, I'd been really interested in ideas and concepts when I when I was studying politics. Um, so I so I, I managed to kind of flip between the two, um, which I think was a, a you know in hindsight a really good thing that I did um, because it meant I could always get work whether it was a development role, you know, developing or writing a new show, um, or I could actually go on to making uh, the show itself. Um, and as I said, we we were lucky that team that I was in at the BBC. We we, we developed big shows like Strictly Come Dancing and um, other sort of Saturday night formats. Um, and then and then I, I worked as a head of development um, at a company called Monkey, who, I'm trying to think what you know, oh, they make Made in Chelsea. And um, I don't know if you remember, there was a Charlotte Church show years ago. So I helped create that. Um, and I did that. And I was probably about 25, 26 at this point. I was quite young and I was lucky. I got kept getting promoted and... Um, uh, sort of given good opportunities and then I was headhunted to go back to the BBC in a commissioning role um, so so the the job I do now as a controller is on the channel side so I work for the channel with a group of commissioners um, and commissioning is a bit like Dragon's Den so people come in and they pitch you their ideas and um, you sit there with a big wad of money 
you don't do that. That'd be, that'd be crass. You know, but you sort of sit there and you go, yes, I, I like the blue one or the red one or the, the one where they dress up in leotards or whatever. Um, or you say, no, thanks, for that. I'm not interested in that. And, that. and that's sort of, you know, very simplistically how commissioning works. So I, I've been headhunted from my job at uh, Monkey um, to uh, go and be a commission. I was like, I think I was the youngest commission editor at the BBC at the time, or uh, ever, in fact. Um, and um, I focused on BBC Three and BBC One, um, and I commissioned shows like Russell Has Good News, Michael McIntyre's Comedy Roadshow, Junior Doctors, um, lot, lots of sort of entertainment, factor entertainment shows. Um, and I did that for about six and a half, seven years. Um, and then I, then I set up my own production company, um, which is often what lots of commission editors, or not, not as a lot, but quite a few people try and do once they leave commissioning, because you've built up a, a reputation, but also a really strong set of contacts on the commissioning side of things, but also in production. And so you're well placed to then go and uh, sell um, uh, new, new ideas or, or run your own co company. And I did that for about... God, how many years did I do that for? I think I did uh, I ran Electric Ray for about four and a half, five years. And then again, I was um, asked to apply for the job at Channel 4. So I've had kind of a, uh, it was a rambly kind of uh, uh, yeah. description of how it has it. But I think that the sort of, the things to take away from it, personally, and for what it's worth, is that um, what the, the, the sort of, the, the really important bits that I, I look back on are the first kind of opportunity I got to get some work experience and just jumping at it and, and being really enthusiastic and passionate about uh, that opportunity. And, and I definitely had sort of swerved or turned down other offers um, in the past. Like a friend says, oh, the great one, you're coming in. And you always feel a bit embarrassed or I don't know, I just thought, uh, maybe that's not for me. But on that occasion, I went for it. And I'm really glad I did because it, it meant that I got that job in Cavos. Um, and, and, and then the other thing I think I did once I was in television, well, as I said, was to, to kind of mix between um, the, the kind of creative side of, create, of making new shows up, like coming up with new ideas, and then actually executing them. So the technical delivery of those shows, whether that, as I said, is on the production or the directing side. And, and that meant I was really employable. Um, and um, I, I never sort of struggled to find work. I don't mean that in a like, big-headed way. I, I, I'm not the best producer or best creative at all but but being versatile in that way um meant that i say I, I never got short of work and so that fear i had of i'm only going to ever work you know three month contracts it never became a thing actually um and i just roll on to, to to new show after new show um or, or new gig to new gig um so that's sort of mostly it i think yeah do you want to know how much you earn and stuff because i always think that, that, that like so back then, when like people never tell you about how much money you earn, uh, I'm not going to tell you how much money I earn now, but um, but so in I the past, um, it would um, be interesting to know at an entry no, level. Entry like, level, like, exactly, exactly. Yeah. I, I think I think entry um, level sort of um, uh, salaries are uh, um, in television anyway. It can be quite opaque; like no one really tells you that stuff. Um, so so back then, and this was a long time ago, it's like nearly 20 years ago. Um, I think I was paid as a runner in Cavos. I think I paid like £300 a week. But on top of that, you get per diems. And this is the best thing about this job. Um, I don't know if you, any of you know about per diems. But you know, explain what per diems are because, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But it's basically they, when you're on location, so you're away from your home, um, the production companies, uh, I think are compelled. It's part of an employment contract, I think. Yeah. I, I don't, but they, they will pay you your expenses to be away from home. So for your food and drink. Um, so, so I was getting like 300 pounds plus like 30 quid a day for food. So I was like, at that time, I was rich. I was like, this is amazing. And I was in Cavos and I could like buy as many shots as I wanted. Um, so, so actually, I, I, I felt like I was earning, and I think the equivalent now for a runner coming in, because I said I was, I was running a production company longer, it's, it's not hugely different, but I think you could probably expect to make between three, 350 maybe 400 quid a week as a runner um that might you know and then and then the next job up is a researcher and you're making and by the way so in in, in terms of if you, you may have already done the math but in terms of yearly salary it, it works out if you're on sort of four four fifty you're getting to sort of 20 odd grand a year um and and that's not it's not loads of money but actually for me at that point in my life it was enough to kind of get by um 
And I think you would expect to, and, and, and the good thing about television and why I'd always encourage people to go in, A, it's like brilliant creative um, industry and, and the culture is fantastic. Like it's very informal. You, you kind of basically know what you like, um, you know, and the, the atmosphere is fun and, and dynamic. You work long hours, but it, it's a really fun environment. So if, if you're not for corporate banking type world, then TV or, or media spaces are definitely for you. Um, but but the, the brilliant thing is about it is, as I said, you, you're, you're promoted quite quickly. So if you're good, you go from being a runner to a researcher you can do that in six months um and and then the money sort of jumps up quite quickly um so if you can if if, if you were thinking about it it's quite it's, it's expensive if I, if say i had to move to london but by the way lots of um, productions are being moved out to the regions um you may have read about some of that stuff so if you're based in, in the north for example near leeds fantastic because channel four just opened their hq there now so but but let's say you you, you think the best opportunity might be in london um and you think i could afford to be a runner for six months to a year there's every chance that you by the end of that time you could get promoted and um your salary increased quite quickly um and so as i said i, I was so I, I, and this is me sort of crudely doing don't completely hold me to these numbers but i'd say runner between three and four hundred quid um researcher between four and six hundred quid and they're, they're quite big they're, the bands are sort of big because it partly depends on your experience and how well you negotiate um you, that, that's one of the things i don't think anybody ever told me about when you're a freelancer you have to sort of negotiate your own rates your own um fees and that's quite a difficult thing to do if you've never done i've never done it before um and someone suddenly goes to you well, how much do you charge and i'm like i don't know like a thousand pounds <laughs> you know so um that 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 you just need to think about a bit before before you get into that sort of space um but you go from sort of i say four uh sort of three to four hundred pounds as a runner four to six hundred pounds a researcher and then as an assistant producer which is the next uh job up you can get anywhere between 700 and a thousand pounds a week and suddenly that you know again you do the math that's like at the top end sort of 50 odd grand a year um to good money and and i, I was I was an assistant producer by the time I was, and this is, again, I'm not trying to say like the big I am, but just like it's kind of give you an, um, uh, an impression of how quickly you can move through the ranks. Um, but I was an assistant producer by the time I was like 23, 24, I think. And then after that, as a producer, you, you would expect to get paid at least a thousand pounds a week, um, up to 1200, 1300 pounds a week. And then, um, and then series producers will get about 1500. And then once you'll be on that, you know, good good producers, exec producers, super producers will charge anywhere between two grand, three grand. You know, the absolute best of the best might get might even be able to go three and a half, four grand a week. So, not I'm not trying to um, uh, give the impression that money is the most important thing. It's not um, your happiness and feeling like you're doing something meaningful where you're learning. Um, and in my case, at least, it, it's creative. But but. Um, you should know i think that tv whilst it's not going to make you a millionaire unless you you set up your own production company and you know create your own ip um it, it can provide you with a good lifestyle you know it's um it's pretty well paid that 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 first stage is tough but you can get through that quite quickly i think that's useful that is really useful and we don't often talk about it and in fact in other industries you very much see that and in fairness you know if somebody wants to go in and work for someone like Schroeder's or somewhere, you know, people will talk about a starting salary around 45,000. So it's interesting to see, but it's interesting to see that if you work hard, you can get up there quite quickly. Um, so that's really cool, actually. Um, so with these people, when they're starting out, one, what kind of person do you think you need to be to be in the industry? And obviously there are so many different roles. I'm sure, you know, you, you, you can be so many different types of people. And we know that. Um, and also, what would you look for in a person? Like, if they want to get their foot in the door, what would you look for? What, what spark would you see? So, to, to, to the first part of the question, just to, to say again, if you, if you don't know much about television, how it's set up, again, a very simplistic way of understanding it, but it, um, TV is divided into the editorial uh, part of the uh, business and then the production part of the business. And, and, um, and that's on shows, right? So, if you're making shows, so um, the editorial part of the show making are the creatives, they're the producers, they're the writers, the directors. Um, and, and if you're someone that loves writing, 
is particularly creative, um, has vision of how they love seeing things um, uh, made or, or, yeah, or stories that you're desperate to tell. That's you, you're the editorial person on, on a show, right? But if you're someone who is obsessed with um, kings on time, you're, you know, you're really anal, basically, and organised and, um, and brilliant at kind of organising people and galvanising them, then you're, you're probably better suited to the production side of TV. And they're equally important. They're so important. And I'm equally well paid. Like, I mean, probably the creators you know when you get to the top top end of things maybe maybe get paid a bit more but but they're equally important and equally well paid um so that's the first thing you probably want to just think about is like which one of uh, which one of those types am i um and then in terms of um the, the, the next part of the question was it what what you look for is that right ma'am yeah what would you do what would set someone out yeah. ahead of anyone else so, so, so my thing is um passion like and um and, it, and sort of energy, right? Like, uh, you've probably got friends who are, I think, um, my wife always says this, you, you can divide the world into uh, people who are radiators and people who are drains, right? You know the drains are the people that come, you're around, you're like, like, hi, how you doing? You okay? Yeah, I'm all right. And like, those fucking people kill me, right? The, the radiators are the people that give energy, right? And those are the people you want to be around. So if you go into an interview or you come and see me, and you're like, oh, I, I just like it's over. We're not, we're not going to be going to because TV's hard, and it's it 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 will take over your life a bit. Um, and you want excitement um, to carry you through all of that, and 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 enthusiasm. So, so I think passion really key. Um, of course, you you know, all, you know. Second thing, don't be um, is also important. Um, like, there's too many sort of. Aren't there? Um, and, swearing, Carl. I'm going to have to edit your swearing out when I put you onto. onto... I've got. Oh yeah, sorry. <laughs> that. Um, um, well, I'm going to make your job harder. Um, uh, but this is the see in television we swear, right? It's, it's, <laughs> um, <laughs> you can do it again. I uh, it. But 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 or or don't be. Um, you know, your personality, particularly at that first stage of your career, matters massively in television. Um, and it's not the be all and end all, but as I said, if you're passionate, kind, considerate, fun, you're going to get on, right? You're really going to get on. And if it, you might be that type of person. Um, and, and the great thing about television, it's opinions, right? It's just, it, you don't need, you don't really need a degree for it. You know, and, and, and I know some, some people will study. We'll, we'll go on that. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll, we'll come back to that. Yeah, yeah, I'll come back to that then. I'll come back to that. But I think passion and being, um, a, 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 it sounds like a wishy-washy thing, but being a kind of decent person, like, like it, you, you pick up on it, right? We, we, we sort of value that. Um, and then, and then sort of more specifically, you, you know, I, I, I'm always looking for somebody that has a, um, a view on the world um, that is distinct and, and different. Um, TV has a, a, has a real problem of homogenizing and making everybody a bit the same. And, and there are lots of industries that suffer in, uh, the same problem. Um, and there's a tendency, you know, for all of us to, to sort of join big groups and want to fit in. Um, and you see this in, you know, on, on all sorts of uh, different scales. Um, and, and somebody that can um, nurture and um, harness their difference is the person I'm really interested in. Um, and and that, that can kind of stand out from everybody else because... You, we don't need more people that look and sound the same and offer up the same ideas. We need we need new sort of voices. Um, so again, if 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 you're if you've got something new to say or different to say, then I would always be really interested in that. Um, as opposed to try the, the person that's tr just trying to fit in, and it's hard to do that. By the way, I'm not uh, you know it sort of sounds again like a kind of um, naive aspiration or like of course everyone wants to be different or but actually it's hard to be different particularly in the sort of world we live in um but 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 tv needs more diverse voices um and and i, I mean that not just in terms of the way people look or um the, their identities but i mean i, I mean genuinely mean the sort of um their view on the world and you know it might be their sense of humor like they might be just really funny or like have a quirky kind of take on something like whatever it is, as long as it feels different and fresh, um, I, I think that's really appealing. That's really that's really good answer. Really interesting answer. And I can see there's somebody called Mariah who's on the screen that's been taking notes. 
but she'll I'm sure we'll she'll be there are questions she's already asked and we'll come to them in a minute um um so um how do you think somebody sitting here today is going that hasn't is going to get that researcher role I mean find that work experience it's hard to get it's hard to come by where Pretty hard. how are they going to get that role so so um uh so the sort of, I mean, I, I obviously haven't, haven't done this bit of the um, the sort of job, if you like, uh, for a long time. But the way I went about it was, um, even once I got that sort of foot in the door, I still had to reach out to people, you know, at the early start part of my career. So it's not like you get the first job and then once you're in, you're in. You've got to continue to sort of network. And 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 I, I hated that expression, like networking or people saying because i didn't really understand it also and it sounded like um just had like a cheese fest like it made you cringe you know the idea that you're going to go out and hand someone your business card or something it's like no nah. and it's and, and that's not how telly works by the way um networking as i now understand it is about connecting with people like trying to have some sort of relationship with them and maybe that's how everybody else understands it anyway but but i i felt i thought networking was something i don't know more highfalutin or complicated and it's basically um trying to make as many connections as i possibly could and so i think if, if, if you have no idea about how you might get in television but you're interested in it first, you've got to do your research and it's hard work so you, you there's no sort of free rides or you know just job handouts as you i'm sure you'll know but but the people that will research for, uh, the production companies that make the shows that they're really interested in that would be my first port of call i'd go what shows do I really love and, and who makes them? And it's not a hard thing to find out. You can, you know, just watch the credits at the end of a show, for example, or you just search online and you'll find out which production companies make which shows and wh who the exec producers are. And once you know who the exec producers are, you just contact them. You, you know, and again, it's, it takes a little bit of work to do this. Um, and my advice would be that you have a spreadsheet or some sort of document where you can track who you've contacted, um, whether they replied to you or not, and, and and when you contacted them, so you know how often you're harassing them. <laughs> um, and and I, I would sort of go to the top of my head. I'd say like get a hundred of them, get a hundred different exec producers. And there, there are plenty of them out there. And and those exec producers, um, or or you might think about heads of production as well. It's the other way around. Actually, heads of production are, uh, usually are based at the production company. Exec producers may be freelancers, but but anyway, you can you can do both, um, and and um, so you can you can go onto the company website, find out who's the head of production. They might have an HR contact. They may have uh, a section on the site that says send us your CVs here. Um, so so that's the first bit of the job, like work out who it is you want to contact and, and what their contact details are, and get as many of them as you can because it's a it's a bit of a numbers game to begin with, um, and you're going to get loads of no's. Like, and, and people will just ignore your email and it's demoralizing but just see it as part of the course and, and see that as part of the game like kind of you can go oh yeah Carl said that I was gonna get loads no this is just part of it right I've just got to keep going keep going and um, and then so once and once you've got all those contacts then you've got to think about well how am I going to get noticed um, and, and keep that right at the forefront of your mind because I, I still get lots of emails from people that say hi my name's um, Steve and um i'm a hard working organized individual that is you know da, 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 da. and it like you just sort of you know it's not a bad email but you just switch off a bit because you've heard it a hundred times um and 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 so i think you just have to think what is it i could say in in these first few sentences because you've only got like a space it's, it's like tv right tv you get 30 seconds i reckon um, maybe less to hook and hook the audience in to engage them and make them want to stay and watch the rest of the hour or half hour because you know it yourself you'll turn something on and you'll make a judgment you'll quickly go in, is this for me or not is this for me or not and it's the same when you get an email or someone calls or texts or whatever um to reach out to you in that way so so what is the first few things you're going to say um and it might be that you you attach like you just a link to a clip that you've seen this is really funny could and then I, I would often write an idea off the back of it I wonder if you can make a show of this and what I was often trying to signal was that uh, I was thinking and I was creative and passionate about telly and and I was offering up stuff that they may not have seen and I didn't really care whether you know it'd be great if they said oh it's a brilliant idea we want to make this idea now um, I didn't really care about that I just knew that it was getting me to the top of the pile um, so, so, 
and and, and I'll, I'll keep that email short as well by the way i wouldn't i wouldn't write pages and pages so people won't get through it um I, my friend of mine who worked on the big breakfast for years he got that job because he um sent them all pizzas um, and then he got toppings. He, got, he used the toppings of pizzas to spell out his name. No, he, he, with pepperoni, he spelled out, give Shed a job. His name was Shed. Give Shed a job. And he sent it to everyone and he put his phone number in the pizza. And he got a job on the big breakfast because everyone noticed him, right? It's like, you're not going to not notice that guy. I, I once got offered a job at EMI, I think, um, which is a record company um, that would want to do some TV. And I'd. And this sounds lame, and now when I say it back to myself, I think that was lame. But anyway, it got me noticed. I dressed up as a monkey, and I did the thinking pose, and I took photos of myself, and I said, give the thinking monkey a job, um, and I put my number on it. And I got a, a job offer. Like, they didn't want to interview me. They were like, you're in. Like, we, we want it. And, and that, that, that might not be your bag, um, and, and I think you know, making sure you're being authentic is also really important. So play to your strengths um but but the the sort of no is be as distinctive and out you know stand out in the best way you possibly can that is key yeah. so stand network 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 stand out in the best way get, you can. get as many contacts as you possibly can and then think how and, and also you, you only need like one killer email right and then you send the same email to everyone so it's not like you're having to do loads and you might tweak it a bit and keep developing it and, and you might improve it you know, I, I would sort of write an email that I thought was nailed on, and then I, I'd sort of improve it, improve it, improve it as time went on, and no one's replying to that one. So maybe I've got to change it, or maybe I've got to attach a photo of myself, or like maybe I dress up as a monkey, or maybe I send people, you know, like you just got to keep sort of thinking, how can I get in these people's faces? Um, and I honestly think if you did that enough, and you did it with enough creativity, humour, um, whatever, whatever, like you, you'll get a response. You might get a response like, don't ever email me again, you nutter. But, but you'll get a response. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Um, I was going to ask you. So, so we don't know when lockdown's ending. Obviously, it's en it's not as bad as it was. But um, what kind of things you've obviously given a lot of ideas in relation to how they can get a job, be it uh, you know looking at the credits and looking at kind of stuff you like. So, what other things do you think people could do in lockdown to you know to to practice their craft? Um, as in, as in, sort of, um, actually developing ideas or oh, writing. Yeah, or... It, you know, someone if someone was thinking, "Well, I want to be a producer. What could they look for if I want to develop an ideas? How could I, you know, you know?" When we were talking about magazines, it was quite simple. You, could... you know, the, sorry. The other thing I should have said, sorry, um, about contacting producers or channels or production companies. Um, don't forget to sort of flatter them a bit. Um, so, like, they've all got egos. Um, so if, if, if you say, I love that show you made, it's fantastic, and I love it because, you can't just go, I love that show, because anyone can say that, but if you can say, I love that show because the casting was incredible, or I love the way the graphics work brilliantly with the music, or whatever, whatever, like, then it, then it again reveals that you're not just uh, out for a job, but you, you genuinely are passionate and, and interested in, in, the, in the sort of form or the, the, the craft. Um, so I, I think that's important. Um, and then in terms of like what you can do during lockdown, um, like if you're interested in television, you know, watch television, obviously, um, keep a sort of a, a journal of why you liked it, what you'd improve on it. I think like, you know, that sort of um, analysis of um, why things work for you. And, and there's no, there's no, um, it's not like uh, you're right. There's right or wrong in it. So you, you're a human being that reacts to stories like everybody else. So if it bores you, it bores you. If it, if it excites you, it excites you. Like um, that's the thing I think is brilliant about TV. It's, a, it's very sort of democratic. Like you know, you don't have to be a sort of genius. Like because you're, it's about the audience. Um, you know, you don't have to have a, a, a specific technical kind of ability, I, I don't think necessarily. Um, there's good taste, there's definitely good taste um, and bad taste, um, but, but I think it's about opinion. So, so, so in lockdown, I, I would um, I say watch as much television, keep a sort of journal on what you like, why, the, why you like it. If, if you are someone that writes, I would start writing. Um, you know, I would also try and produce as much stuff as you possibly can if it's filming things on your phone, or it might be editing stuff, it might be editing funny clips. Um, again, anything that you can use as almost like a showreel, um, 
to demonstrate your passion and uh, potential uh, to a you know to an employer um, I think would be key um, I mean it's a, it's a new world where you can make so much yourself now um, when I was starting out you, you couldn't so much it was expensive you'd have to have all the kit but you can do so much on your phones now I, I would I would definitely focus on that yes that's good <laughs> We've got a few questions and please everyone else ask any more um, as we go along. Um, so Bethany says, um, any advice for screenwriters or people with ideas, i.e. for a series that would like to produce something, get something produced? How could you go about pitching the ideas to TV companies or getting into development roles? So I, I think in a scripted space, um, there will be readers at production companies. Um, and again, it's a bit like, when you're trying to just get a runner's job or you know you're going to probably have to do quite a lot of legwork in terms of getting noticed um the other route is an agent you know if you get an agent a writing agent um it can it can help you uh, and and lots of agencies will again will have readers there that will be just kind of taking in scripts and and um assessing the the kind of potential of them um but yeah, I, I would um, I, I would find out within each of those well, which production companies you admire or think the script may suit best, um, and then contact them, make a list of them, and then contact them. Uh, but but not forgetting that you you having to stand out because everyone will be applying in more or less the same way. You know, it'll be an email and attached script. So what is it you could do? could you go to the company? Could you find out where they are? I mean, if you're if you're nearby, could you go and physically give it to them as opposed to doing it on email? Um, could you try and phone up and have a quick conversation with someone? Um, again, it's just like getting up in their grill as much as you possibly can um, to get noticed. Cool, thank you. Um, so for Mariah, she's written two um, things here, but Carl, I've just finished my uni and my biggest aim in my life is to become a TV presenter and I can vouch for her on that one. Um, I've known her for three years and work in the TV industry. You mentioned becoming a runner. What do you suggest for people like myself who are passionate and trying to get entry level jobs? Um, so, so lots of lots of TV presenters start out as runners. Um, Derm O'Leary was a uh, was a runner. Um, who else? There's, there's lots, um, and and so that is a good route in because because um, it can be a harder route in if you're just gonna say, I'm gonna be a presenter from the off. Um, and you need to work and, and working within the industry is the best way to then develop contacts and people to recognize you. So I think that is quite a good way actually. Um, the, other, the other thing you can do is, I don't know if you've started making a show reel, um, uh, and if you have, uh, again, try and avoid cliche or, or the obvious. So, um, what, what I would look for in a presenter is not just someone that could walk and talk and um, read a bit of all cue um, or tell me you know, what's going to happen next, but, but someone that brings you know, a, quite a unique personality to, to, to the presenting, if you like. Um, and it's that thing I was saying before about a voice, like that you've got a distinct voice. And so there might be something just quirky about the way you um, script yourself if you're writing yourself your own scripted lines or there might be something quirky about the way you set those interviews up if you can do a bit of interviewing um whatever it is and and, and i would watch other people's show reels um and and you know once you, you can see them all on youtube now and once you see quite a lot you'll see they're all done in a quite a similar way um so and and, and that might not be your your thing by the way you might not be that type of creative and if you're not then i would try and work with someone that is um, the best sort of presenters often have a brilliant partnership with a producer um, that gets the best out of them um, and also brings lots of good ideas. So, so that might be the other kind of way of doing it. Um, and then once you've got a showreel, once you've got some material, um, you can go direct to people like me at channels. Um, it's a bit of a long shot that, if I'm honest. Like, um, I, I can't remember many people that I've seen who've come you know completely afresh um that we've then given work um but but it's 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 not impossible so i, I, I think it, it, you can do it um but the other thing is again is to get an agent so you know look around at the agencies who look after the sort of presenters that you think you might be similar to um because you think i don't, I don't mean that you know you obviously want to stand out again but you might go oh okay i want to be a sports tv presenter what, which agencies look after sports presenters um, and, and then you might approach them that way as well and, and, and even if they don't take you on try and get five minutes on the phone with them try and get some advice go and see them if you can um, I think I think those are the probably the best routes 
And again, it's hard. It's just hard. It's competitive, as you probably know. Um, and so you've got to really stick at it. Um, and then, you know, for those that do, they, they, they succeed. Yeah, cool. Um, Mariah, you know, Carl's, um, who Carl is now. She, she's put some great, she's put some great things on LinkedIn recently. So I'll, I'll send you them to have a look. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah, do. Um, hi, Carl and Naomi. I don't think I can give you much advice, but which is the best social networking platform for people in your industry? Um, do you mean in terms of for, for finding work or, or? I'm not sure. Work? Andrea, do you, you can unmute and ask that. Andrea? It was about um, for finding work. Do you think LinkedIn is the best or do you think screen skills would be a bit easier? I think, Vic, what is it, what's the um, network you use for work? Is it? Um, well, there's a few. There's Talent Manager. Um, talent Manager and... Yeah, Talented People is a new one. So Talented People and Talent Manager. My, my wife's a, um, a freelance director and producer, so... She uses talent managing. No, no, no. This is not about her. This is about me. Come on. Um, <laughs> the, um, yeah, no. She she uses um, uh, hello <laughs> um, talent manager and um, what was there on the screen? Talented people. talented people. But but LinkedIn. I think more people in I think more people in tele use it, but it's probably more the corporate side of things rather than the creative side of things. Or it's not really for freelancers. I'd say. Um, uh, and there are some Facebook groups um, that you can uh, search for, which are about uh, freelancers in television. And people often post on, on Facebook looking for runners and researchers. Um, so that might be the other one. Cool. That's really helpful. Um, Josh has asked, with E4, what is the events department like? Is this an in-house team or do you source external production companies for your events? We, we, we do have an events team. Um, and actually, it's for the entire channel. Um, so uh, I can't remember her name, um, but yeah, we, we, we have them. And actually lots of, I mean, if you're interested in events rather than TV per se, um, and you're interested in, in sort of, um, you know, media companies like, like uh, Channel 4, um, then, then I would just sort of look at a range of them. So, you know, whether it's, um, you know, Universal Music or uh, a marketing, uh, sorry, an ad agency like Mother, um, each of those companies will have, I would have thought, in-house events teams um, because they're big enough. Um, but yeah, we, we have our own one, I think. I, can, I mean, I can get, I'm pretty good. I, know, I know that you have your own one and so do the BBC have their own events yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. Always... And if, if you, if I, I'm sure I can get the details if, if it's helpful. Cool. Well, Josh, um, yeah, well, you can get that through me, Josh. Um, and I can ask Carl. Hi, Carl. Would you say the best way to get into the industry as a cinematographer would also be as a runner? Um, yeah, probably. Yeah, my wife's saying yes. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. I, I mean, look, the, run, run, the, the runner's job is so brilliant because it exposes you to all sorts of people within the industry. And, and, it, and it depends what sort of runner and where, you know, you could be a runner on a game show and that may not help you massively. Um, but, but even then I'd still say it's a, it's a good starting point. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and then um, when you're, my wife's just saying that when, you know, when you run, when you're a runner, um, and say you're a runner on a big factual entertainment series like The Apprentice or um, or Dragon's Den or something like that. But you, you, there might be the, the director of photography might go and uh, the DOP might go and do a separate shoot that you could follow them on. And so you, you get added um, sort of value. And, and, that, and as I said, when you're a runner, you're you're able to kind of dip in and out of lots of different parts of it. Not, not for very long, you know, because you've got to service the production in terms of like teas and making sure they've got everything they need uh, kit wise and stuff like that. But, but I, I think it's a brilliant, brilliant job because it, it will not only help you network, um, but also get you to understand how, how television works. Yeah. And we were speaking to um, earlier in a couple of months ago, um, an, a man who is an art director, um, an art director, he art directed Paddington 2 and train spotting and the like. And his daughter's actually a base PA, which is just what it's based. That's basically one up from a runner really in the film yeah. industry. Um, and he was saying that, you know, he started off in the bill and um, right. I made that transition because he was doing sets and stuff in the bill and that went from that. So just meeting people, as you said before, Carl, totally, totally. talking, 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 
you know totally and, and i think at the start of your career don't don't worry if you're not exactly where you want to end up i.e if you really want to make films or you really want to make you know high-end feature documentaries but you start out on a um a game show as a runner that's all right like because you will make contact and you'll 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 be adding important credits and experience to your cv um and you can make that transition uh, across you know to different genres later on um the most important thing i say is that you're you're getting good credits and experience and and building your relationships um so yeah I, I, like there's some people I, I know i've met who've come in and, and they feel quite sort of passionate about a certain form of television um and they're, they're sort of being really purist about it and sort of um if I'm, you know made sort of a bit precious like oh no i'll never do that sort of thing it's like you know what just get in the door and get as much experience as you can and and you can correct it once you're inside the, the, the industry um waiting for your sort of perfect job um uh won't 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 come i think at the start at least cool that that's good to know um david maxwell asks has the growth of netflix amazon prime etc changed the traditional tv industry oh, yeah, massively massively um <laughs> It's bloody annoying <laughs> uh, for channels like uh, E4 and, and Channel 4 um, because, you know, our, our model is based on ad revenue. So, um, and at the moment we've been really hit hard by lockdown because the ad markets fell through the, falling through the floor. Um, whereas, you know, subscription services like Netflix or Amazon Prime or Apple um, are pretty well protected, uh, not not entirely protected, but pretty well protected. Um, and and it's something really compelling about a service that is uninterrupted by ad, adverts. Um, uh, however, we are free to air public service broadcaster, and that comes with a certain type of program uh, and uh, programs and responsibilities. I think the audience really value. Um, so if if we were, for example, trying to for privatised. Um, you, you may lose a lot of those really important arts programs, news and current affairs, um, document, single documentaries. Um, and, and so whilst, you know, the SVODs like Netflix, et cetera, have been very disruptive, um, I still think there's a really vital role for public service broadcasters to play. Um, it's just more competitive, right? Because they, they pay big budgets and they're, you know, scooping up a lot of the talent and some of the best ideas. but um, I think our local um, voice, if you like, our, our sort of UK domestic focus um, sets us apart from those global players. Thanks, Carl. That's cool. Um, um, Naomi um, Hugen, Hugen, Hugen? Um, hi, Carl. I'm 16 and I'm hoping to get an internship in TV. How would I go about doing that with no experience? And is it possible to do an internship without yet doing my A-levels? I think, I mean, you might be able to at certain production companies. Um, uh, I think most production companies tend to employ people at 18 or above. I don't, I don't think it's impossible, but most of them do. Um, uh, and I don't, I think most of the internships will probably run from your 18. And, and they're, and more and more companies, by the way, they're, not, they're, they're, they're looking beyond the usual graduate, um, because as I said before, they want a diversity of voices, you know, and if, if, if we've all come through the same sort of university um, uh, education, um, you know, and we're all watching the same sort of shows, reading the same sort of things, of course, the ideas would all become quite samey. So um, I know that a lot of uh, companies have, have deliberately gone after um, uh, individuals that don't have that sort of background. So, so but I think, I think you, you, you'll, you'll have to, You'll have to work perhaps a bit harder to um, stand out and um, make your case, you know, and, and sort of demonstrate your potential. Um, you know, there, there are there are some jobs like I think. Not in sure. I'm not actually sure what the and I, and I might be wrong here, but just with the the 16 year old, whether at 16, you know, internships are. are so, yeah, um, I, I don't know. I, 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 I doubt it, but yeah. Um, but if, you, if you're 16 and, and really keen to get into work um, at that point, again, I, I, you might be able to run, I, I'd be a runner. There's, the problem about when you're 16 is obviously you can't drive 
Um, and if you can drive in your runner, that's really useful because um, you might be driving kit around. Um, and, and there might be certain restrictions, um, you know, if, if say filming's taking place in a nightclub and there might be restrictions on that. So, so that, that might, but there, there are other ways you can get into organisations. I know at Endemol, for example, there's a guy who joined when he was 16 and he joined the facilities department. And then I think later on um, branched out into other aspects of TV. So um, it's not entirely impossible. It probably is a bit harder though, I, I can't lie. Thank you. Now we did not, I think you've probably answered this question already, and well you have, and I know it's probably off, come off the back of um, current events, and we spoke about it a bit earlier, about what your actual take is on diversity in the TV industry. Currently, so well we've been talking about it a lot, obviously, in the last week or so. Um, it's uh, not good enough, um, like lots of other industries, um, we we, we don't quite do as much as we should have done. Um, it's still predominantly white, um, predominantly middle class. Uh, I think we, uh, in, in some ways, I think we've got as big a class problem as we have any other problem. Um, you know, I think it's wrong for people to equate diversity with skin colour only. You know, the diversity comes in all obviously yeah. sex and sizes and stuff. Um, and um, uh, and I, as I say, I think we've got a class problem. And that's partly because um, TV, as I said, you know, it can be expensive, if you like, to get into. Um, if it, particularly if you if you're starting out in London, where rents are uh, high, um, so so it, it tends to favour or um, you know or people who are you know economically supported by parents, um, it, it, you know, it, and, and who are more affluent, they they can get on in television a bit more easily. Whereas some of the others, won't. Um, um, but yeah, it's, it's we, we sort of I think we just today um, made um, some more pledges to improve diversity and representation uh, at Channel Four. Um, and and look, so, so from, on a personal level, as I said, like my own background is is different from most that work in television, and I think it's important because it's about creativity, like, and it makes sense in that way. Um, there's a really good, uh, I was listening to um, Matthew Saeed, I don't know if you've uh, heard of him, but he was talking about diversity and, and it's um, the, the power of it. And he, he, he sort of did a good little sort of sum uh, of sort of thought on this. He's like, if you ask 10 people who are all the, <coughs> all the kind of same, um, and they were all, they're all brilliant. They're all like the best of the best, you know, because you often, when you get into this diversity debate, people often will go, oh, but that person wasn't the best person with the job. Um, and you should only pick the very best person for the job. And, and sometimes, and, yeah. and sometimes those people, um, if you, if you can, if you continue like that, those people all end up looking and seeming the same, right? The, the, you know, the person that's got 10 A-levels or, you know, an Oxbridge degree or whatever. Anyway, if you ask those 10 people to come up with 10 ideas, um, the chances are they'll come up with the same 10 ideas, right? So, so out of that, you get 10 ideas. Whereas if you ask 10 different people to come up with 10 ideas, arguably you'd get 100 ideas. And so, so you, just a simple sort of maths of it, I thought was really interesting. Um, but, but, um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's sort of not good enough. And if you're, if you're not from a sort of traditional TV background, um, then I think TV is probably like needs you more than ever, um, and it's a great time to be, be joining TV. And and look, and, and if if by the way, if you are from a sort of um, affluent background, and you know um, you've had the sort of um, privilege of going to a great university, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, that's no bad thing either. Right? It's not like <clears throat> you should give up, you know. But, but again, it's, there'll be something different about you, of course, um, and it, it's nourishing that uh, and um, uh, you know nurturing that as best you can. I've just put in the chat there, um, I think you're going from uh, Matty Syed, Rebel Ideas, which um, he That's talked right, yeah. a lot about this. So if anyone's interested in reading that, and I know that the guys from Corp Hills have been looking at that recently, um, then do. It's, fa it's really fascinating. Brilliant, brilliant, yeah. And that the whole point about diversity and, and cognitive diversity mm. um, is 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 so strong and, and I think especially for you in the TV and when in any industry 
um, it, it, it's, it's the way of the future. And I think it's, we're proving it at the present at the moment. Um, one more question there from Jasmine. And if anyone has, has a quick question, then please just prop them in because we're coming to the end of our time. But um, um, also, what are the best apprenticeships available within the industry? Um, do you know? Well, I, I think the, 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 com the biggest companies will do the best apprenticeship so that you know itv studios i think do one end of ours i mentioned um it'll be a certain size company that will do internship there might be some sort of medium size in uh, uh, indies independent production companies that, that do them but i would focus on the bigger one bbc um studios will probably do uh, apprenticeships I know, I know there's a journalism um apprenticeship that they still do um i think channel four do apprenticeships um, um and uh so and, and internships as well so you, so you could uh, um look on our website about that um but it, it is more as i said it's more likely to be the bigger companies that do them cool there isn't there isn't one that stands out in my mind but but i know all of those big ones do and i've got this brilliant last question from josh carl i think I don't know if you can see it how do you think your career will develop from your current very high position i mean it's unimprovable where i'm at right it's just i'm, I'm at the peak <laughs> I'm at the peak. Um, no, I don't know, actually. I, I think um, I probably, I mean, I, I may or may not go back into production at some point, um, working at a production company, or I may just stay on the channel side. And, and I love it at Channel 4. Um, culturally, it's probably the best place I've worked at. Um, and I really believe in Channel 4's DNA and reason for being you know it's championing diversity it's inspiring change it's making a difference um and and that's that's a real privilege to be somewhere where you can genuinely like make change um and you've got a platform to do that unbelievable um so so if i can stay at channel for us for as long as possible keep from, oh, i can't swear keep you from getting my job keep you away from Channel 4, yeah. Don't apply. Um, none of you talented people come in and steal our jobs. Um, but yeah, no, I, lo I love it there. So hopefully I'll be there for a long time. I'm sorry I keep swearing, Naomi. It's all right. I found okay. something to edit my my Zoom and R, so there'll be lots of beeps. Yeah, yeah, fair enough. Um, I think anyone else got any more questions or are we are we good? I think that um, that really great questions, everybody. And Carl, you really have given it an insight into into the industry and and how uh, I think what it takes to get ahead as well and 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 what people should think about and how they and how they can get in at an entry level. Um, You're welcome. Please don't give up. It's it's hard, but don't give up. Like keep going. And if anyone wants to contact me, my email is easy to get hold of. Um, you can get hold of it by Naomi, but you can find it on the Channel Four website. Feel free to email me. I will reply. I promise. Um, but um, don't give up. You've got to keep at it. Keep at it. Thanks, Carl. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Thank Good you. Good luck. Take care, everyone. See you later. Good evening. Cheers, everyone. Okay. Bye.